So now that March is past and a little bit behind us, today I actually wanted to sit down with you guys and talk about everything that I knit during the month and what I casted on, what I finished, and where I'm at with my current project. So today is another Knits and Babbles. And if you're new here, Welcome to my channel. My name is Ev and once a month I like to sit down with you guys and go over in a podcast type video all of my whips, knits, acquisitions and just what I've been up to during that month. So this is that and today I am actually wearing my Everyday Knits sweater. which is a pattern designed by me. I am currently working on the pattern before sending it, fixing little things before sending it to the tech editor. And I'm also planning to cast it on again, just to make sure that the instructions make sense for the different sizes and actually make sure that for all sizes, the rib in the collar actually works with the short rows because this has short rows and then it works to connect with the rib on the sleeve. To the cuff. So that is just what I need to double check before sending it off to the tech editor. I also need to message her and make sure that she is available before if I have to find someone new. So that is where this pattern is at but this is the sweater I'm wearing today and I love it. I think this might be one of the last few times I wear it however because it's getting kind of warm outside and this is alpaca in mohair so might be a little toasty for the warmer days. So let's hop right into the finished knits. So the first one that I want to talk to you guys about is actually my camisole number four. I think, had I casted this on last time in the last video? I don't specifically remember. If I have, well, this is a done. <laughs> I finished it. I knit this up in Sadnaskarn Merino. I knit it in this kind of like green sage dark olive color, but it is actually the Sadness Garn Sunday yarn, which is 100% merino wool. Now this yarn is really interesting because the way it is spun, it's kind of like coiled. So I don't know if you could see that. I'm not crazy about it. Um, so it does give an interesting texture to the knit, which I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, but it is a very bouncy and stretchy yarn and it worked up really well. It knit up really well. I just don't know if the really twisted over twist yarn is my favorite. I also found and brought the first original camisole number four that I knit like over two years ago now and this is it. And look how wide this is. This was knit up in 100% cotton and it is really, really wide. If I put I put my darker green, funny enough, they're both green. So do you see how much whiter <laughs> the cotton one is? I think I remember knitting both the same size. It's just the different yarn. Yeah, that's just it. Now I did knit the correct length for the pattern from the underarm to the bottom till where you cast off. However, looking at how much yarn I have left from, I think this was the third skein. I think I might go back, just rip off. It was a very simple bind off. It's not like a tubular or anything. So it's just, I can just pull it off. But I think I might actually go back and add maybe an inch or two. And I think the strap, I might've shortened them. I was expecting them to grow a little bit more. So I think I might quickly just undo the strap and go back. Now the question is to see how long it'll take before I do these changes because sometimes the smaller the change is, it's like an afternoon quick change, you know? It's not like I need to rework the pattern or something. It's just complete mindless knitting in the round. But it seems that the smaller the task is for me to go back and redo, I don't know, the less I'm likely to do it. But I really want to wear this and right now it fits properly and it like if I wear high-waisted pants it's totally fine. I think looking at how much yarn I have left I would like to have just maybe a little bit longer. So that is the first pattern that I finished and I don't know if I mentioned this but it was a pattern by my favorite things knitwear and this was the first tank top of hers or first pattern of hers that I knit 
and had bought in the past. And it's a beautiful pattern. The broken rib is super fun to knit up and I highly recommend it. So the second pattern that I want to talk to you guys about, I am currently, it's still wet, it is blocking, so I'm not going to put it on and I still have ends to weave in and things to fix up, but I wanted to show you guys and in case you want to know more about it, I'm actually making a video from start to end on the whole process, so look forward to that, but it's actually my Elizabeth blouse. So this was knit up in 100% baby alpaca yarn. It is three single ply, three, it is three two ply lace weights held together, if that makes sense. Three strands of two ply lace weight held together. There we go, got it. So this is the beautiful, this is the beautiful finished piece. And I think this might be one of my most favorite knits yet. I haven't tried it on yet so I'm really excited to see what the actual look will look like but it is so soft so soft and I want to show you guys and I want to show you guys a little sneak peek but this is what my cone looks like after finishing the sweater. <laughs> so I still haven't weighed it or checked exactly how much yarn I have left on here but I'm pretty sure if I wanted to I could even knit a second one the exact same. This yarn together, it draped, I mean it's wet, but I can't wait to try it on and see exactly what it looks like. So this is a pattern by Petite Knit. And I know from looking at Ravelry, people have pretty mixed feelings about this pattern. Some people say that the V where it opens or the flap, the collar that folds over, cause it's kind of like a, what is this called? Like a polo, um, people, do say that I'm assuming depending on the yarn they use as well it's flattering for some it's not flattering for others some people have un unraveled this project uh, some people love it though so it's very it's a very mixed feeling project but I'm super happy with what it looks like and feels like this is so soft so soft very interesting <sighs> but yeah I also don't remember when I cast this on. So if you're curious about the whole process of when I started this, how I started this, how the pattern actually knit up, um, I guess you'll just have to wait for that video to come out. But this was the second finished knit of the month. Now we can hop into the whips. The first one I wanna to talk to you guys about is my Drops of Memory scarf or shawl. I ended up knitting another repeat during the month. That's pretty much all I did. Not too much advancement has been made. I kind of got distracted by other knits and just really wanted to finish the Elizabeth blouse. So I kind of put this one on the side and I'm assuming as the summer happens, this one I will be reaching for it less and less because it is a full wool scarf. If you remember, this is also being placed right now on very short, circular needles because I find it easier to just slide onto the next stitch. So it's not this long, it's gonna be a lot longer. This was the first one that I am now using as a yarn cake, but this is more or less the length of the one on the needles. This is being knit up in a Maiwa wool, which is the white one. Um, I think that's just like a basic white wool merino. And then it is with Yarn Art uh, Rayon, with merino and a rayon silk as the orange. Now the orange is a sport weight and the white one is a fingering weight. So you do, there is a thickness difference in between both skeins. So you do kind of see more of the orange, but I'm totally fine with that. Um, I just thought that these two colors together would make for a beautiful scarf. That's not too bad. So here I have my little stitch progress keeper that I got from Knit Crate a while back and it shows where we started off and we are here now. So just worked up another repeat. I think last month all I had done as well was just a repeat. So basically I have to do 20 repeats if I remember correctly. So we'll be at this for another 20 months. 
yeah, we're gonna have to pick up the pace. The next project that I wanna talk to you guys about is actually another tank top by, by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I was gonna say Petite Knit. And it fell on the floor. I have guinea pigs, so hay tends to get everywhere and hair. So I don't know why I decided to do it in a black yarn, but here we are. I finished the bottom. I did the fold over, uh, it, it's black. You can't see anything. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit tricky to show you guys, but this is the tank top. So basically this is the front panel, this is the back. I need to do the collar and then the sleeve kind of cuff rib detailing. It's not a rib, folded hem. And then at the bottom, I did it. I just need to sew it in. It's a little bit tricky to show right now because this is on double pointed needles and I don't want my stitches to fall off. But I'm also doing it on DPNs because my 2.5, I couldn't find them. And I found the DPNs. But basically the pattern recommends to kind of add in a thread of a different color to know where you start on the smaller needles for the border. And then knit a couple rows till you knit a purl row, fold it over, knit a couple more rows so that you can fold it at the purl and then just sew it on the inside. And because you had a blue thread kind of sewn in where you started on the smaller needles, it'll show you where to, it helps to know on the inside where to attach and sew in the folded. I wish I was further along to properly show you guys, but this is just... Hopefully next time I'll be done by the end of the month. By the way, this is being knit up in a wool yarn. I am actually knitting this in Drops Nord. So it's a thicker yarn, but basically I actually really like these types of tank tops and I kind of wanted a thicker one. And I know that I'm not gonna be wearing this in the middle of summer when it's like 30 degrees outside, but I anticipate this to be more of like a spring, fall piece, maybe into winter if I wear it with a sweater over. That's kind of my goal. This will most likely be an all year round tank top and not specifically a summer tank top. I know some people have messaged me and were like, hey, won't that be too thick for summer? And my goal here is not to have this for my summer days, unless it's like a little bit chilly out. I don't know, we'll see. I think I just have one more pattern that I'm working on and it is actually one that I did swatches for in the getting ready for my next cast on project. If you remember, I finally caked up a, a good chunk of my cone into its own skein and I actually started knitting on, let's just, I actually started knitting on the Florence bag. So I have the little stockinette border here and then the bag is slowly being worked up. So this is just a couple of rows of the repeat. It's a two row repeat, but whew. Is this soft if you watch that video where we knit this swatch I accidentally only did one strand and one strand of mohair one strand of cotton and one strand of mohair um, and it wasn't until I edited when I looked back at the pattern and realized that it states three strands I'm not too sure what happened but I am now doing three strands so it is oh no ay 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 what did I do what what a ta ta What a ta ta Okay, whatever. I'll just pull you through like this. Okay, so what was I saying? What was I just saying? I think I was saying, basically, I am in fact doing three strands. So this is what it looks like now. It does look a lot more dense of a bag like material and it feels really, really nice. So basically once I'm done the bag, I will have to go buy a lining for it because I don't currently have any fabric that is this kind of neon lemon green. The fuzzy, so the fuzzy strand isn't actually a mohair. I think I called it a mohair, but it is actually a alpaca, like a brushed alpaca and silk and it is called lemon cello and i feel like this will perfectly represent the bag as a whole the screen doesn't have a name no vernil oh it does it's vernil but i feel like this will perfectly represent lemon cello and i honestly want to get this done pretty quickly hopefully before and hopefully this is a bag that i can put in my suitcase and bring with me on my trip abroad i have just had a call with my sister where we booked all our train buses 
fairies, literally restaurants, everything we need for our trip because we are actually going to, well, I'm meeting her in London and then we are going to Italy for a couple of days and then back to London for more. So I just had a call with her for that, which was like a three hour call, which took so long and I'm exhausted. And I don't know why I just decided to film this and talk to you guys for so long right after. I'm gonna be so talked out by the end of this video. But anyways, all that being said, hopefully I can bring this bag with me and use it as a little purse on my little trip across. I think that that would be super cute. And I'm planning on bringing a lot of summer dresses since I'm going in June and it should be warm. So hopefully this cute little neon green bag will look stunning. So that is the last project that I'm currently working on. This is also a pattern by Petite Knit. I am realizing that right now I'm just working on my favorite thing knitwear and petite knit. I'm being a very I'm being a very basic knitter this month apparently. I feel like they're the pattern writers that people learn about first and just go to first before diving into the full world of knitting. I feel like it's they're just so easily accessible in so many different languages and they're really good patterns and they look nice. So anyways, I'm just having my moment um, but yeah, so hopefully we can keep working on this bag and what I plan to do with it is actually what I'm thinking about for this one. I wanted to make a video about it, but I think we're going to make a video for the uh, lining and attaching the strap and kind of do a more finish this project with me type of video. But if you follow me over on Instagram, you will probably have seen for the last couple of days that I've been really into spindle spinning or just getting back into spinning on my spindle and this is a Turkish spindle that I got from Knit City last fall. I'm currently spinning this beautiful braid which was hidden in my stash apparently but it is Baby Camel and Tucson Silk 50-50 and it is from Fiber Goddess. I completely forgot I had this one but I now I remember when I bought it um, from Fiber Goddess, she had said that this was like a very hard fiber to spin because the staple length is relatively short and it's a very slippery fiber with the silk and baby camel. I thought that it would be a more like later down the line when I'm really experienced, I'm a really experienced spinner. But as I'm waiting to start my big spin on my spinning wheel, I just wanted to spin something and I didn't exactly want to start a like fill up a bobbin with some extra yarn so that I couldn't use it anyways. So I just took out my spindle. And another thing that really motivated me is going to Fiber West, seeing so many people there just walking around with their spindle or sitting down and spinning. Most of them were support spindles, which I do not have, but I'm tempted to buy now. But basically a lot of people were just spinning and I don't know, just made me want to take out my spindle again. So currently this is what the spin looks like. Now this is a spindle that I bought from Crafty Jack's Boutique, but I actually broke the shaft, the like stick part. So this right now is a chopstick. <laughs> I just put a chopstick in there and it fits, so we're kind of going with it. But yeah, I accidentally sat on it. So be careful where you do put your spindles. Um, I just remember sitting on the couch in here and hearing <laughs> And I was like, I'm new. And I think I broke it like the day after I got it. So hopefully over the next couple of months or so, I can spin all this beautiful roving. This was a four ounce braid, 4.4 ounce braid. So it's quite a hefty one, but I'm thinking about spinning it single and then plying it together on my Ashford electric wheel. But yeah, I think that that pretty much sums up my knits and babbles for the month of March. If you guys want to know more about acquisitions, I highly recommend you guys check out last week's video where I went to Fiber West and it was my first experience and bought a bunch of roving to be spun up. Um, and if not, I look forward to a video on the Elizabeth blouse. I'm going to go block it and hopefully dry it so that I can officially try it on. And I hope you guys have a lovely, beautiful day. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.